Hello, welcome pen friends. Welcome to day seven of 30 inks, 30 days. We have a red ink today. Uh, my choice for today is Sailor and it's hearth red. The word means hearth and I cannot seem to get the Google lady to even say the word today on my phone. So something's wrong. Now, if you'll notice, there is a gold sheen on this ink. So sometimes like right here, it starts to not quite look like itself, but it is a very true red, like uh, kindergarten red. It's it's Christmas red, too. I like it. Um, I didn't think I was going to, so that's why I'm making such a big deal. But uh, here is the result of the bath test. We find that it doesn't have much resistance at all to the water. They're all being put through the same test. 20 minutes where they're completely submerged, and then it's dried off. And we found several of them. Um, that had some water resistance where we could still read um and then but day one which was uh yuki akari i'm not sure if i'm saying that right and apricot from yesterday those were the two that had just absolutely no water resistance today we see just a tiny bit but not enough to really read it you can almost read it so, and, and the reason I'm showing you everything today, or everything I've got out, one of them is taped into the book, is because this is our last day with the Sailor Ink. We're going to be moving on to Straits Pen Honest Ink, but we're on our last day of Sailor Inks uh, from the Ink Flight 29. So here it is, and okay, it's doing pretty good, although when I watch it later, I may not think so. Uh, as far as looking red, it looks red, and it is a bright red. So here it is in the broad nib. There was pretty good availability on this, it looked like. Pen Chalet had a 50 mil bottle for $16, a 4 mil sample for $350, but they were low inventory on their samples at Pen Chalet. And then at Jet Pens, $19 for a 50 mil bottle. Anderson Pens, uh, $325 for a 3 mil and $15 for a 20 mil. So they had the little smaller bottle, but oof, that was you know, comparatively high. I guess when you start getting the smaller bottles, you you know, you're going to pay more per mil. Um, about 30 seconds to dry in the broad nib, and then put it in the stub nib, and it's just, woohoo, it just pops in that nib. It took more than 30 seconds to dry, but I was prompted to play around with my last name with that, because I just really like how crisp that red is. And it did surprise me. I thought we were going to be getting something totally different out of the nib. Okay, and then in the fine nib, nice and red. You know what? It holds up and everything. It's it's not as intense as it is in the broad or the stub, but I still liked it. Um, it looked like it was going to be a little more than 20 seconds to dry. I didn't hang around too much longer. Okay, um, here's the chromatography right here. Look at all that, like pink and magenta coming out, and then there's your yellow at the top. There's, you know, it gets red kind of in the middle, but wow, that's an intense, amazing chromatography, I thought. My first impressions, I did not expect to like this one. And I'm late today, not because I didn't want to write with it, though. I still wanted to, it's because we had a busy, a fun day. We did a fun thing in the morning. We went to the bookstore, and then we, I had some work. So, um, you know, outside of the home. But here is, uh, you know, my, my thing. I was totally blown away and surprised because I didn't think it was going to look this way in a nib. I thought it was going to look orangish for some reason. I don't know why. Um, the, the sheen is very subtle. It, where it affects us most is where, like, where it's on a, a big area like this, it's across the top of the color, and it does make a difference. Maybe that's why I didn't think I'd like it. All right, and we will turn it over. And we don't find much shadowing or anything, just a little. This is Tamari River 68 GSM, and we're going to, we'll hang it out here while we do the Rhodia. And this is Rhodia 80 GSM dot grid, and here we go. Now, to me, it got even more, I mean, it, it just got even more red on this paper. Really nice. And the broad nib, almost dry at 25 seconds. Um, looked nice in the in the uh, stub. This is a Goulet 1.5 stub. I, I don't know what happened on this drying business. Um, I guess I was going backwards to try to find where it would smear, but uh, I guess we could say 25 seconds to dry, which surprised me. 
in that great big uh, stub. And again, I wanted to do kind of working with that that nib because I liked how the red looks so much. Here we go in the fine nib, 15 seconds to dry. Still nice and red, but you can see what happens. You know, it it certainly is really intense in these bigger nibs, and then it, but it it's pretty. It's got plenty of saturation for you if that's what you like to write with is the um, uh, smaller you know thinner nibs I think you'd still would be happy with it you're gonna get a real red not seeing the gold sheen on this rhodia but very happy with the true red color yes that's true so I guess we can then put it here it, it is a whiter white paper so it makes a difference now let's go on to CVS caliber paper the inexpensive of our roundup here that has a lot of gold sheen so that's <laughs> it's looking a little different there hmm Okay, here it is in the broad nib. Whoops, everything is shifting around because I'm being... Okay, broad nib. Um, it was going to be more than 30 seconds to dry. Here it is in the stub nib. So I started to see quite a bit of gold sheen there. Just, just hanging around on the top of things. 30 seconds, it looked almost dry. I can barely see a little fuzziness. Because, I mean, I run my hand right over it and press down hard, so... Okay, here is the fine nib, the Lamy fine nib, uh, almost dry at 20 seconds. Um, and it didn't do a fading number really like it sometimes does. Like even, even over here with apricot, it just wasn't as saturated and it went down really low, but it didn't do that. This, has, this is pretty intense actually. And I put good ink paper match up. You know, this is my cheaper paper and I want to know that later because, you know, save myself trouble. Uh, you know, I, I, I need to know because I use this paper a lot. So let's see if anything kind of shows up. Oh my. <laughs> I'm sure it won't be straight, but. Okay. So there they are. We can kind of see them and we can turn this over. This is Rhodia, very good paper, and hardly any shadowing, no bleed through, of course. Um, and here we're going to get some ghosting. Nothing severe, and it looks fine to me. I liked it on all the papers. I'm not quite sure what to say, but I did really like it on that final book, which is uh, Hewitt Packer heavy um, paper, and we'll look at that at the end. Um, so I think it would be great on Claire Fontaine as well, because there was just no dryness on any of these papers. So I can't stop looking at this, because it just surprised me, that's all. I, I don't know why. I thought it was going to look a lot different. Oh, I did want to show you. This is an old, old ink journal of mine. I can see it's from September 2017. I was playing around then with Diamine Wild Strawberry. And I actually thought at first that Diamine Wild Strawberry was going to be kind of a match for this ink. But as I compared them, and of course this is Rhodia to Claire Fontaine, but... They're very similar. This is 80 GSM. This is 90. They're very good quality paper. Um, anyway, I do see a difference in the color. And, and I was writing, it looks like with a medium nib. So, yeah, we're not, we're going to, the closest that'll come is that Lamy Fine nib because that was a medium Sir Wix. Okay, that, that was from Fountain Pen Revolution. But, uh, I don't know. I, I'm not seeing huge, huge differences, but I still like today's better, the Sailor Ink better. Although, but that is a really good alternative, I think. I mean, that's the reason I wanted to show you. Okay, let's look at some color comparisons. I could probably talk all day about this ink because it blew me away. Um, here's our panel for today, and I think it's pretty much what you see is what you get because I, I didn't have a whole lot of extras in this color family. Whoops okay right in the middle is our ink of the day uh what did we say hearth red <laughs> it's easier for me to say since i don't have a translation now tasha aka is has a lot of gold sheen let me hold it up and maybe we can see it maybe not but it does it has a lot of red sheen as well <clears throat> I don't have that memory of being quite as crazy about the Tasha Red, though. That That's very interesting. This is going to really make me uh, get 
some things out again and try because I'm so tempted to get a bottle of this that I really need to slow my heels because I have quite a bit of red in the house. There's that Diamine Wild Strawberry. And uh, I can't remember. It must have had a little gold sheen, but not a whole lot. And I really couldn't find very many other inks that just looked a lot like our ink today. But here's Caran Dash Infrared, and that just flashes out of the page at you and kind of was reminiscent. And then this is my favorite red ink up to this point. This one uh, right below our ink of the day, KWZ Thief's Red. It's funny, I'm really distracted because everything looks so crooked. And But when I straighten it, then the other part so it doesn't matter what I do okay um, I've got to quit looking at it and just trust that you can basically see what I'm trying to show you here's diamine classic red and you know you could see that it sort of departs from that true true red <clears throat> a little bit it deepens it, it, and you know we are getting just a little bit of distortion but not a whole lot um, colorverse Mars curiosity it, that's it, more subdued in some way. Yeah, even though I remember it, it's pretty, it can be intense too. <clears throat> this one, this one's really kind of a pink, I believe. Roar and Klinger, Fernambuk. I have had that sample. I got that sample in the beginning of my adventure. And pretty much it's more like a pink, but it does have some intensity to it made me really think of this one even though it's not and then robert oster whisper red is more of a dusty color so it's it's not going to compete at all for our ink of the day i got out just a couple more let's see and i don't know why okay here's platinum mixable flame red like maybe on the surface i was thinking that there was some similarity and then this I don't know I really don't know okay uh, diamine flamingo pink maybe it was the inner part that just made me think of it a little but it's pink it's not red and what I'm seeing from the nib is not what I was expecting so these things were pulled out last night and today was a whole different story as soon as I loaded all the pens so um, yes I gotta tell you what I think of the ink <laughs> okay so let's grab our little book from the pen thing from Brian and uh, keep it in mind the cover doesn't come with it that's just something that I have and here it is okay so this paper it, it closely reminds me of Claire Fontaine it may not be quite as quite the same um, it's that Hewitt Packard um, really in really good uh, paper like laser paper premium paper I, ha I have it written down somewhere but I don't have it right next to me uh, so I put very true true red in the nib and surprised me definitely I can see a little bit of gold sheen if I hold it toward my window where my light is kind of starting to fade I would give it high marks in the saturation it, it seems to be plenty saturated even when you get down in a fine nib you can still you know it's nice it flowed really, really well. Shading, I thought, was a little below average. If you, if it's a shader and it's good, it would be good average at five, and I put it a little below. Bleeding and feathering, let's skip that because we're not on paper that tends to do that. Um, dry time, I, I kind of think it's a little bit average. Not really bad, not really great. Uh, there was sheen, so it's hard for me to know how to mark that. Like... Do I love Sheen and is it way up here? No, well, I'm just trying to say, is there any? And there's a little, there's some, and it's very subtle. No halo, no shimmer. Overall, I give it at least an eight and I'm just, it's growing on me. I'm not sure I could stand to look at a long letter written like pages and pages and pages with this, but I certainly would address Christmas cards with something like this. It's pretty. Um, then it kind of made me wonder, hmm, you know, would that be, that would be good. And so I, I started pulling some things out, not to try to match the color, but, you know, I, it made me think of Christmas. And even though this is a different color, the color in the middle of the squares is real red. And, and I make these little uh, booklets from old cards that I got sent to me. And then I put the CVS paper in them and I 
take notes. And then this was a card as well. So I was looking for red and I was looking through my cards, but I really haven't gotten my cards for this year. So, <laughs> okay. So I'm just so distracted. It's ridiculous right now. I'm not going to actually do the, um, the art or the uh, Nick Stewart technique on camera today because I'm, I'm running a little behind with other things, but I'll, if I do it, I'll show you next time. What I wanted to say was, um, my, my, sorry about that. You could go to sleep in between. So this is my cola ring that tells me what I have in a full bottle. And this helps me slow down too sometimes. But so I have the KWZ Thief's Red and I love it. And it's, it's real red and it's a little deeper. Um, I think we saw that on the panel. Let's get our panel back up here real quick while we're just discussing it. You can kind of see that here, although we're not, you know, it's tough to show the differences. The eye starts to just, you know, it's pretty intense color here. So I've got that and I love it. And I could probably write my Christmas cards with that, truthfully. Um, then I've got the KWZ standard red number one, but that's not as true of a red. And it's not on here, but that's okay. It's here. And um, I think you can see that it, it's deeper and it's not as bright of a red. And then I've got ruby red. I love ruby red. It's kind of leaning over toward that maroon color. But it's really, really nice like a Victorian Christmas. So that's, it's pretty. It's really pretty. So um, it's funny though. This is the second ink that has gotten to me. The other one was, uh... oh dear. Let me flip back in here because I'm having a brain freeze. They're all so pretty, but did I? Oh, yeah, Grenade. So this one was tempting for a bottle already. And now this one from today, it's like, okay, let's just keep a wish list and keep on, you know, keep on trucking because uh, you know how it is. So that is the, the ink for today. And tomorrow we're going to start um, a whole new thing because... Moving right on to a whole new group. Uh, eight inks from Straits Pen Honest Ink. Let's see, and I've got it on another card too. So this, this will be for tomorrow. And it's going to be neat because just like the Sailor inks, I have not explored yet Straits Pen Honest Ink. It's going to be the very first time I get nipped to paper with their inks. And it's just really going to be neat. There's a whole exploration that we can do. And there's eight of them. And so I'll see you tomorrow with that. And I'd love to hear what you think of this red. Um, took me by shock. I thought, I'm not going to like this. and But I'm going to do it because I do them all. And that's how it is. And then I ended up loving it. So let me know in the comments what you think. And I've already talked quite a bit. <laughs> okay. I will see you tomorrow. Bye for now.